Welcome. In this short video, I'm going to teach you the absolute basics of how to debug your code using breakpoints in Godot. Debugging lets you stop the execution of the code and inspect each variable or how the code is behaving line by line. First of all, let's take a look at this example case I prepared. This is just some dummy code that doesn't really do much. First of all, we're printing let's go. Then we're setting two variables, a and b. After that, we have a loop that's going to loop for five times. And inside of that, we're simply printing i, and then we're setting a equal to i times two. After that, we're making a call to add func, which is a function I created down here, takes in two integers, adds them up and returns them. And at the end, we're printing by. If I run this scene and we take a look at the output, we're going to get let's go zero, one, two, three, four and by. So this is the example. I'm going to create a breakpoint at the start of this function, which is the ready function, of course. So to create a breakpoint, just go to the left side of the line that you want to create the breakpoint at. You're going to get this red dot. You're going to click on that and that's going to set the breakpoint. Now, when I run the scene, the execution of the code is going to stop at this line. And you can also see this yellow triangle here. That means this is the line that we're about to execute, but we haven't executed it yet. If we take a look at the output, you will see that nothing is printed yet. We're just at the start of ready. You can also see that once this line was reached, the debugger tab opened up at the bottom. This is going to be the tab that we use to debug the program. The two most important things you need to learn here are step into, which is this one and step over, which is this one. Step over lets you execute the line of code that the yellow triangle is on. So for example, if I click on step over or use the shortcut, which is F10, the yellow line is going to go to the line underneath and this line will be executed. Now, if we take a look at the output, you will see that let's go is printed. So this line was just run or just executed. Let's go back into the debugger. Here we have an option to, you know, do step into as well. And this is just going to go into a function if we have one. I'm going to explain this a little bit more in just a second. Let's take a look at these you know, windows we have here. Stack frames is going to tell us which function we're currently in. As you can see, it's telling us that we're inside of the ready function, which is inside of this script right here. It's also telling us you know, the line we're at as well. Next to that, we have locals, which is going to show us the variables we have inside of this function. As you can see, we have A and B, and they're set to be null here because we haven't set them yet. These lines, we haven't run, run them yet. So that's why these are null. If I step over to the next line, A is going to be set. As you can see, A is now 10. And if I do it one more time, B is also going to be set as well. Next to that, we have the breakpoints, which shows us what breakpoints we have. In this case, we only have a single one at line four. So this is the basic use case of a breakpoint. You can stop the execution at a certain line. You can then step over to the lines that you want to get to. And while you're doing that, you can take a look at the variables and how they're, how they change. Now we're going to go into this for loop here. So I'm going to step over, get inside of that. And once we do that, you can see that we got the I, which is the loop variable, which is zero at the start. Now I'm simply going to loop a couple of times and you can see that I is increasing each iteration of the loop and we're also setting a to a different value. So this is excellent when you're looking for bugs or something isn't behaving in the way that you're expecting it to. You can simply put a breakpoint, stop the execution, go line by line and inspect inside of the local tab here how the variables are changing and try to understand what's going on and maybe what's going wrong with the code. We can also take a look at the output tab and you can see that we're printing the loop variable in each iteration of the loop. So let's finish looping here. Once we reach the end, we're going to go to the next line and the next line is calling this function that we created. 
Now I'm going to show you the step into functionality here. If you use step over, you're immediately going to go to the next line. If you use step into, you're going to go into the function that you're about to execute. So first of all, I'm going to show you what happens if we do step over here. We're immediately onto the next line, to the print line, as you can tell. Now I'm gonna replay the scene. I'm gonna get to that point again. And now I'm going to step into. And once I do that, I go into that function, as you can tell. Inside of here, I have a new set of local variables because now we're inside of this function. We're not here anymore. And you can also see that in the stack frame as well. Let's take a look. We're currently inside add function, not ready, as you can see. Inside of here, we have a sum variable that we're about to set. Currently, it's null. And we can also see the values we received for number one and number two. I'm going to step over. That's going to set sum. And on this line, we're going to go back into ready. So let's step over one more time. Now we're done with this line. We made the call to the function and we're at the last line of ready. If we step over one more time, we're going to get out of ready and we're going to go into process because process is the function that gets called after ready and this will be called each frame now, but we don't really have anything in here. Once you're done debugging, you can click on this button to continue you know, executing the game regularly. Once you do that, the game is going to you know, open up again and it's not stopped right now, but since we don't have anything in the game, you can't really tell. So that's the basic use case of debuggers or like the breakpoints. Let me show you one more thing, one more example or one more trick. I'm going to run the scene. We're going to stop at this breakpoint. Let's say that you want to now stop here. What you can do is you can put a breakpoint there and you can start or continue. You're going to stop again once you reach that one. So that's like a quick way of stopping there, there and then um, executing what's in between and then stopping here again. Okay, cool. So that's all I want to cover in terms of how to debug your code and how to use breakpoints. There's a lot more stuff here inside of the debugger. We have a ton of tabs here, but this is the most useful one that you can learn. And believe me, this is really going to help you when you're making a game because you're going to hit a certain point where the code isn't really doing what you think it should be doing. And this is a great way to, you know, see what's really actually going on. If you like this video, take a look at this one as well. Also take a look at the link in the description. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.